the bandwidth servers by Sarojini Naidu. Now, I told you this is a celebration of Indian womanhood. Right? And because the poem revolves around bangles, which is an important ornament of embellishment in Indian society or in the Indian women. Okay. Now, and uh, in the first stanza, we saw a speaker, bangle sellers are we who bear or shining loads to the temple fair. Right? So the speaker introduces himself or rather themselves as bangle sellers who have come with the loads of bangles to the Temple fair. Temple fairs are a common feature again in Indian culture because usually the gods are deities for a, on whom this particular temple is dedicated to. Uh, their feasts are celebrated with the uh, with pomp and uh, a lot of gatherings, a lot of programs cultural programs and variety of uh, uh, other um, programs take place during these occasions. And uh, so it's a, uh, it, it is a fair, it's a, uh, in, so it's, it's, it has got all the qualities of a fair where you have crowds of people and lots of hawkers and vendors who will be selling their products and bangle sellers are uh, one of the most popular ones among them. So they are introducing themselves, advertising their products and urging people to buy their bangles for their daughters and wives. Alright? And they have very colourful, colourful bangles with them. Alright? And the second stanza, the second stanza, what we find is a, uh, we find a presentation of a, the state of a woman's life. First, some are meet for a maiden's rest. A maiden is an unmarried woman, right? So fitting for appropriate for a unmarried woman. And uh, they prefer to wear such bangles as uh, silver and blue and then we have some glow with the and uh, glory of a uh, limpid glory of newborn leaves. So silver, blue and green are the colors preferred by uh, the women of this age group, that is, uh, they are married women uh, who are young and expecting to be married soon. Then, so we finish these two stanzas, we move on to the third stanza. The third stanza, what we find is uh, the another stage of a woman's life, right? So, women. So different stages of a woman in life is presented in this particular poem. And the third one, you find that third stanza, the theme is the transition of life of a young woman from a maiden to a wife. Right? And uh, what are the types of bangles that uh, uh, is uh, preferred for her? Right? These people who are changing or transforming their lives from uh, that of a, an unmarried woman to a married woman. Let's look at those lines. The some are like some are like fields of sunlit corn, meet for a bride on a bridal morn. Some 
like the flame of a marriage fire or rich with the hue of a heart's desire. Tingling, luminous, tender and clear like a brighter laughter and tear, brighter tear. Okay. So here we have uh, the uh, the third stanza highlighting highlighting the uh, another stage in their woman's the second stage in the in Indian woman's life from, that is a change or a transition from from that of a maiden that is an unmarried woman to a married woman. Married way. Okay, so let's look at those lines in detail. Summer like fields and what color, what colored bangles are appropriate for her according to the bangle sellers? It says, Summer like the bangle sellers, mind you, they continue advertising their product, their bangles. Some are like fields of sunlit corn. Meet for a bride on her bridal morn. Some are like golden yellow color. The fields of sunlit corn. Alright? What color would that represent? That color that is represented is golden, golden yellow colored bangles. Golden yellow colored bangles. Like the ripe corn fields, where from where you have the sun shining on them, and then the corn fields look bright yellow. And they such colored bangles. It says meet means appropriate, suitable for the bride on her bridal morn. It's a, the best or suited for a, a newly married bride on her marriage day. Then, he also says, some like the flame of her marriage fire or rich with the hue of her heart's desire. And some are like the, they are compared to the marriage fire. And what color is it? Bright red. Bright red. So these are the colors. Golden yellow and bright red are the colors preferred by the newly wed women. Alright? The newly wed women. And here you shall see two, two of those similes that are used. See, when a comparison is made by using the words as or like, then we call it a simile. See the similes that are used? Some are like field song. So some, some here stands for some bangles. And the color of a, the rich ripe corn fields. And they are appropriate for the bride, newly married bride on her bridal morn. Bridal morn means the morning of her marriage. Some like the flame of her marriage fire or rich with the hue of her heart's desire. What is the hue? Color. The color of her heart's desire. Her heart's desire. Her heart, heart's passion. Now, in the previous slide, we have seen young maidens. Uh, who are looking forward passionately to their marital day or their marriage day. So it's a, a fulfillment. So the uh, bridal morning or the, their wedding morning is a, the day when they have fulfilled their heart's desire of getting married. And therefore, and the flame, what is flame? Flame means Flame means fire. Alright? Flame is a fire. And uh, fire is a uh, very important in the marriage ceremony in the Indian culture. 
the marriage ceremony is performed uh, when the marriage ceremony is per performed the bride and groom go round the fire go round the fire as they commit themselves to each other to be husband and wife they they make that promise going around the fire all right so fire is a very important important aspect uh, uh, is what a very important role in the in in indian marriages okay so the fire of our passion so so these uh, red bright red bangles are uh, suitable for the the newly wed and uh, it symbolizes the marriage fire all right the marriage fire that is lit all right they witness uh, uh, in the witness of fire they marry each other also it also stands for her heart's desire it also symbolizes the fulfillment of her heart's desire of a getting married all right and then they are tingling and luminous tender and clear like a brighter color and clear all right so they are tingling tingling is the sound produced by the uh, the ringing of small tiny bells such sounds similar sounds resembling the ringing of tiny bells is called tingling sound luminous luminous means bright tender means gentle all right gentle and clear bright clear like a brighter laughter and a cheer see look at those the the last line again there is a simile here her her marriage day is a, a full of emotions because it stands for laughter and cheer that means it is a mixture of joy and sorrow now why because it starts with her joy the expresses her joy of starting a new life with a newly made relation or with her husband and his hand and secondly it uh, also uh, it symbolizes her tears her sadness at leaving her parents behind so in the indian culture after marriage or uh, the woman leaves her family and goes to her husband's family so there is that sadness in leaving her parents her family who have uh, been a great solace solace to her all her all these years now she is leaving them behind and going to a new relation a newly formed relation uh, in her husband and in her new family that is a uh, husband's family so therefore it basically symbolizes a, a great transition transition uh, in the life of an indian woman from that of a maiden and a married uh, virgin to a married woman all right a new role so uh, she is acquired and she has to perform the new role okay so therefore in this one line you will find that that uh, all lot of emotions all lot of emotions are expect, uh, expressed in this one line a uh, brighter laughter and a bridal tear so i told you it symbolizes her sadness at the same day her joy laughter and a tear okay 
Then the third stanza, you have uh, the fourth stanza. Then it goes to the. Uh, uh, let's move on to the fourth stanza. Okay. Some are purple and gold flecked gray for she who has journeyed through life midway, whose hands have cherished, whose love has blessed and cradled fair sons on her faithful breast and serves her household in a fruitful pride and worships the gods at her husband's side. Now we have seen the woman, so, uh, the second stage of a woman's life, the front, that of a maiden to a married woman and now this is the third stage of a woman as a mother and a faithful wife. That is the third stage of, of a, an Indian woman. And what do you find here in the fourth stanza is the concept, the idea she, the poet has or the, the poet Sarojini Naidu here writes down what she perceives as the qualities of a good wife and a mother. Alright? So, now in the third stage, now she has become a wife and then soon she shall acquire the role of a wife as well as that of a mother. So, what are the good uh, qualities? But what are the qualities that are associated with a good wife? That's what is uh, described in the last stanza. And uh, the colors associated with it. The, see, they are a purple and gold flecked gray. Gold flecked gray. Purple colored bangles that have a purple color with a sprinkling of gold on gray. Sprinkling of gold. Gold fleck. Fleck means sprinkling. Having a sprinkling of, of gray. Midway, it's middle age, right? Midway. 
so it is suited for middle aged women all right these bangles are appropriate or suitable for the middle aged women who has journeyed through her life who has journeyed through her life raised the children whose hands have cherished whose love has blessed and cradled their sons on her faithful breast so who are these middle aged women they are women who have a journey through life passed through the married life raised the children well and remained faithful to her husband and her family right and cradled their sons on her faithful breast faithful loyal so she has been loyal to her husband and to her family okay loyal means faithful means loyal breast part and serves her household in fruitful pride and she is proud of her family and worships the gods at her husband's side all right so this is the picture of a perfect perfect wife all right these bangles are perfect for for middle aged uh, women who have uh, maintained her household with pride and and worship her worship her god worship the gods at her husband's side so she is a god fearing person she has proved herself to be she has proved herself to be uh, a, a faithful wife and a and a loving mother okay so some of common of old day or she who has journeyed through life midway midway is in her she is in her middle ages and whose hands have have a cherish whose love has blessed and cradled cradled in her means cradled means brought up brought up fair sons fair means beautiful sons look at the use of that sons the word does not say children instead of that instead of that he uses the word she uses the word sons that is very important why is that it suggests the ingrained indian attitude of male preference that word sons being used instead of children is uh, uh, very significant very significant and this uh, uh, tells us about the ingrained attitude of a male preference in the indian society all right then so therefore you have in the last stanza the qualities the qualities associated with a uh, with a good wife as a, the poet perceives it all right so she is she is a loving mother who has a brother mostly male children okay sons beautiful male children and then uh, who uh, remain faithful to her husband and to her family and serves her household with in fruitful pride so she is proud of her family and serves her family with the pride all right the household chores that she performs she considers a, a, as a something to be proud of and worships the gods at her husband's side and she is a god fearing woman uh, who has lived been faithful to her husband and to her family uh, and proud of her family as well as 
she prays to God or worships God at the side of her husband. Okay. So that is the that is the third stage. Now let us look at the three stages of a uh, woman in Indian society, as the poet says. So here we have in the second stanza we have a, the maidens or the unmarried maidens. The, the unmarried women. And what is what does this symbolize? The the importance associated uh, to virginity, chastity. Alright? Because in Indian society, premarital sex is not something uh, permitted, it's something abhorred by the society. And uh, a woman is expected to remain a virgin until her marriage. That's uh, one of the things that is highlighted there. And secondly, marriage, the bride, the second stage is of a woman is that of a bride. And this has got two aspects. One is she leaves her own family and uh, joins her husband and her and his family. Right? So therefore, the uh, sadness associated with leaving and the joy of her, a fulfillment of her dream. Because a maiden uh, keeps dreaming of her. Like the, the birds that dream of dream, the maidens keep dream of their uh, marriage. And uh, marriage is a fulfillment uh, in the life of an Indian woman. Alright? So uh, marriage is sacred and, uh, uh, and uh, fulfills uh, the mission, the desire of her. Uh, or the heart's desire and the passion of a woman uh, who a virgin who keeps looking forward to work that day, the day of her marriage. And the third stage of a woman we find is a, this is middle aged. Middle aged. A middle aged woman. Now she has performed a duties as a as a as a loving mother and a faithful wife and a faithful wife as a loving mother and as a faithful wife right and then uh, we also saw that uh, it's expected a good wife shall produce maids or that kind of an attitude is there in the Indian society. Or uh, there's a, always a preference for medicine. So, uh, uh, wife is considered, so it, bringing forth male children also is considered to be a uh, positive quality in a, in a, or it's a fulfillment for the Indian woman or an Indian mother. Okay? So, the motherhood is appreciated here. And the sacredness of loyalty in marriage is also appreciated in the third stage of a woman. Okay. And then, you find uh, the, uh, she worships her, uh, God along with her husband. So she has to be God-fearing and so on. All these points are brought out. And then, one of the things, this, uh, uh, Preference for male children is also associated with certain other traditions that are associated, uh, that are found in the Indian society, like for instance dowry. Right? The system of dowry is banned, right? And yet it is practiced uh, at, in various forms, at various places, at various levels. Okay, now, and that is the reason why. The Indians look forward to having male children because the moment a girl is born into a family, the parents have to start thinking of amassing a huge dowry for her marriage day. Right? So that is a, again, it's a, 
uh, it's a tripling of uh, this idea in this life. That's why that uh, she has hinted at this uh, preference for male children in the Indian society. Right? Okay. So these are the three stages of uh, women. And uh, the, uh, though the speakers are bangle sellers who advertise uh, their products or the, their articles, the bangles, and uh, by proclaiming they have uh, they have bangles for uh, of multi colors or various colors uh, with uh, which shall be suitable for women of different stages women uh, for maidens for uh, uh, newlywed brides and uh, uh, middle aged women and uh, mother right so so you do things are uh, the steps of uh, the stages of a uh, life of an indian woman that's what we said about it in this particular point all right is that clear okay so with that we come to the end of the bangle sellers <laughs>